The Siege of Leningrad Blockada Leningrada was a prolonged military blockade undertaken from the south by the Army Group north of Nazi Germany against the Russian city of Leningrad Street. Petersburg on the Eastern Front in World War II. The Finnish army invaded from the north, cooperating with the Germans until they had recaptured territory lost in the recent Winter War, but refused to make further approaches to the city. The siege started on 8 September 1941, when the last road to the city was severed. Although the Soviet forces managed to open a narrow land corridor to the city on 18 January 1943, the siege was not lifted until 27 January 1944, 872 days after it began. It was one of the longest and most destructive sieges in history, and possibly the costliest in casualties suffered. Some historians classify it as genocide. Background Leningrad's capture was one of three strategic goals in the German Operation Barbarossa and the main target of Army Group North. The strategy was motivated by Leningrad's political status as the former capital of Russia and the symbolic capital of the Russian Revolution, its military importance as a main base of the Soviet Baltic Fleet, and its industrial strength, housing numerous arms factories. By 1939, the city was responsible for 11% of all Soviet industrial output. It has been reported that Adolf Hitler was so confident of capturing Leningrad that he had invitations printed to the victory celebrations to be held in the city's Hotel Astoria. Although various theories have been put forward about Germany's plans for Leningrad, including renaming the city Adolfsburg as claimed by Soviet journalist Lev Bozymensky and making it the capital of the new Ingermanland province of the Reich in Generalplan Ost, it is clear Hitler's intention was to utterly destroy the city and its population. According to a directive sent to Army Group North on 29 September, "...after the defeat of Soviet Russia there can be no interest in the continued existence of this large urban center." Following the city's encirclement, requests for surrender negotiations shall be denied, since the problem of relocating and feeding the population cannot and should not be solved by us. In this war for our very existence, we can have no interest in maintaining even a part of this very large urban population." Hitler's ultimate plan was to raise Leningrad to the ground and give areas north of the river Neva to the Finns. Preparations German plans Army Group North under Field Marshal Wilhelm Ritter von Lieb advanced to Leningrad, its primary objective. Von Lieb's plan called for capturing the city on the move, but due to Hitler's recall of 4th Panzer Group, persuaded by his Chief of General Staff, Franz Halder, to transfer this south to participate in Fedor von Bock's push for Moscow, von Lieb had to lay the city under siege indefinitely after reaching the shores of Lake Ladoga, while trying to complete the encirclement and reaching the Finnish army under Marshal Karl Gustav Emil Mannerheim waiting at the Svier River, east of Leningrad. Finnish military forces were north of Leningrad, while German forces occupied occupied territories to the south. Both German and Finnish forces had the goal of encircling Leningrad and maintaining the blockade perimeter, thus cutting off all communication with the city and preventing the defenders from receiving any supplies. Although Finnish participation in the blockade mainly consisted of recapture of lands lost in the Winter War. Thus, it is argued that much of the Finns' participation was merely defensive. The Germans planned on lack of food being their chief weapon against the citizens. German scientists had calculated the city would reach starvation after only a few weeks. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Leningrad fortified region. On Friday the 27th of June 1941, the Council of Deputies of the Leningrad administration organized first response groups of civilians. In the next days, Leningrad's civilian population was informed of the danger and over a million citizens were mobilized for the construction of fortifications. Several lines of defenses were built along the city's perimeter to repulse hostile forces approaching from north and south by means of civilian resistance. In the south, the fortified line ran from the mouth of the Luga River to Chudovo, Gachina, Uritsik, Pulkovo and then through the Neva River. Another line of defense passed through Peterhof to Gachina, Polkovo, Kolpino and Koltushi. 
In the north the defensive line against the Finns, the Karelian fortified region, had been maintained in Leningrad's northern suburbs since the 1930s, and was now returned to service. A total of 306 kilometers 190 miles of timber barricades, 635 kilometers 395 miles of wire entanglements, 700 kilometers 430 miles of anti-tank ditches, 5000 earth and timber emplacements and reinforced concrete weapon emplacements and 25000 kilometers 16000 miles of open trenches were constructed or excavated by civilians. Even the guns from the cruiser Aurora were moved inland to the Polkovo Heights to the south of Leningrad. Establishment The 4th Panzer Group from East Prussia took PSKOV following a swift advance and managed to reach Novgorod by 16 August. The Soviet defenders fought to the death, despite the German discovery of the Soviet defense plans on an officer's corpse. After the capture of Novgorod, General Hopner's 4th Panzer Group continued its progress towards Leningrad. However, the 18th Army—despite some 350,000 men lagging behind—forced its way to Ostrov and PSKOV after the Soviet troops of the Northwestern Front retreated towards Leningrad. On 10 July, both Ostrov and PSKOV were captured and the 18th Army reached Narva and Kingisep, from where advance toward Leningrad continued from the Luga River line. This had the effect of creating siege positions from the Gulf of Finland to Lake Ladoga, with the eventual aim of isolating Leningrad from all directions. The Finnish army was then expected to advance along the eastern shore of Lake Ladoga. <laughs> <laughs> Orders of battle <laughs> <laughs> Germany Army Group North Feldmarschall von Lieb 18th Army von Kuschler XXXXII Corps 2 Infantry Divisions 26th Corps 3 Infantry Divisions 16th Army Bush 28th Corps von Wichtoren 2 Infantry 1 Armored Divisions 1st Corps 2 Infantry Divisions 10th Corps 3 Infantry Divisions 2nd Corps 3 Infantry Divisions L Corps under 9th Army 2 infantry divisions 4th Panzer Group Hopner 38th Corps von Chapuy 1 infantry division XXXXI motorized corps Reinhardt 1 infantry 1 motorized 1 armored divisions 56th motorized corps von Manstein 1 infantry 1 motorized 1 armored 1 Panzer Grenadier divisions Topic Finland Finnish Defence Forces HQ Finnish Marshal Mannerheim 1st Corps 2 Infantry Divisions 2nd Corps 2 Infantry Divisions 4th Corps 3 Infantry Divisions Topic Italy 12 Squadrilla Moss Mezzi di Assalto Italian for 12th Assault Vessel Squadron CC Giuseppe Bianchini Regia Marina Topic. Soviet Union Northern Front Lieutenant General Popov 7th Army 2 Rifle, 1 Militia Divisions, 1 Naval Infantry Brigade, 3 Motorized Rifle and 1 Armored Regiments 8th Army 10th Rifle Corps 2 Rifle Divisions 11th Rifle Corps 3 Rifle Divisions Separate Units 3 Rifle Divisions 14th Army XXXXII Rifle Corps 2 Rifle Divisions Separate Units 2 Rifle Divisions, 1 Fortified Area, 1 Motorized Rifle Regiment 23rd Army 19th Rifle Corps 3 Rifle Divisions Separate Units 2 Rifle, 1 Motorized Divisions, 2 Fortified Areas, 1 Rifle Regiment Luga Operation Group XXXXI Rifle Corps 3 Rifle Divisions Separate units, one armored brigade, one rifle regiment. Kingisep Operation Group. Separate units, two rifle, two militia, one armored divisions, one fortified area. 
separate units three rifle divisions, four guard militia divisions, three fortified areas, one rifle brigade of these, the 14th Army defended Murmansk and 7th Army defended Ladoga Karelia, thus they did not participate in the initial stages of the siege. The 8th Army was initially part of the Northwestern Front and retreated through the Baltics, the 8th Army was transferred to Northern Front on 14 July. On 23 August, the Northern Front was divided into the Leningrad Front and the Karelian Front, as it became impossible for front headquarters to control everything between Murmansk and Leningrad. Zhukov states, Ten volunteer Opolchenie divisions were formed in Leningrad in the first three months of the war, as well as 16 separate artillery and machine gun Opolchenie battalions. Severing lines of communication On 6 August, Hitler repeated his order, "'Leningrad first, Donetsk Basin second, Moscow third. From August 1941 until January 1944, anything that happened between the Arctic Ocean and Lake Ilmen concerned the Wehrmacht's Leningrad siege operations. Arctic convoys using the Northern Sea Route delivered American lend-lease and British food and war materiel supplies to the Murmansk railhead although the rail link to Leningrad was cut off by Finnish armies just north of the city, as well as several other locations in Lapland. Encirclement of Leningrad Finnish intelligence had broken some of the Soviet military codes and read their low-level communications. This was particularly helpful for Hitler, who constantly requested intelligence information about Leningrad. Finland's role in Operation Barbarossa was laid out in Hitler's Directive 21. The mass of the Finnish army will have the task, in accordance with the advance made by the northern wing of the German armies, of tying up maximum Russian sick, Soviet strength by attacking to the west, or on both sides, of Lake Ladoga. The last rail connection to Leningrad was severed on 30 August, when the Germans reached the Neva River. On 8 September, the road to the besieged city was severed when the Germans reached Lake Ladoga at Schlüsselburg, leaving just a corridor of land between Lake Ladoga and Leningrad which remained unoccupied by Axis forces. Bombing on 8 September caused 178 fires. On 21 September, German High Command considered how to destroy Leningrad. Occupying the city was ruled out, because it would make us responsible for food supply. The resolution was to lay the city under siege and bombardment, starving its population. Early next year we enter the city, if the Finns do it first we do not object, lead those still alive into inner Russia or into captivity, wipe Leningrad from the face of the earth through demolitions, and hand the area north of the Neva to the Finns. On 7 October, Hitler sent a further directive signed by Alfred Jodl reminding Army Group North not to accept capitulation. <inaudible> <inaudible> Finnish participation By August 1941, the Finns advanced to within 20 km of the northern suburbs of Leningrad at the 1939 Finnish Soviet border, threatening the city from the north. They were also advancing through East Karelia, east of Lake Ladoga, and threatening the city from the east. The Finnish forces crossed the pre Winter War border on the Karelian Isthmus by eliminating Soviet salients at Balustrov and Kurjasalo, thus straightening the front line so that it ran along the old border near the shores of Gulf of Finland and Lake Ladoga, and those positions closest to Leningrad still lying on the pre Winter War border. According to Soviet claims, the Finnish advance was stopped in September through resistance by the Karelian fortified region, however, Finnish troops had already earlier in August 1941 received orders to halt the advance after reaching their goals, some of which lay beyond the pre-Winter War border. After reaching their respective goals, the Finns halted their advance and started moving troops to East Karelia. For the next three years, the Finns did little to contribute to the battle for Leningrad, maintaining their lines. Their headquarters rejected German pleas for aerial attacks against Leningrad and did not advance farther south from the Svir River in occupied East Karelia 160 km northeast of Leningrad, which they had reached on 7 September. In the southeast, the Germans captured Tikvin on 8 November, but failed to complete their encirclement of Leningrad by advancing further north to join with the Finns at the Svir River. 
On 9 December, a counterattack of the Volkov Front forced the Wehrmacht to retreat from their Tikhvin positions in the River Volkov Line. On 6 September 1941, Germany's Chief of Staff Alfred Jodl visited Helsinki. His main goal was to persuade Mannerheim to continue the offensive. In 1941, President Raiti declared to the Finnish parliament that the aim of the war was to restore the territories lost during the Winter War and gain more territories in the east to create a greater Finland. After the war, Raiti stated, "...on August 24, 1941 I visited the headquarters of Marshal Mannerheim. The Germans aimed us at crossing the old border and continuing the offensive to Leningrad. I said that the capture of Leningrad was not our goal and that we should not take part in it. Mannerheim and Minister of Defense Walden agreed with me and refused the offers of the Germans." The result was a paradoxical situation, the Germans could not approach Leningrad from the north. There was little or no systematic shelling or bombing from the Finnish positions. Mannerheim had spent most of his career in the Imperial Russian Army stationed at Old St. Petersburg, the proximity of the Finnish border 33 to 35 kilometers 21 to 22 miles from downtown Leningrad, and the threat of a Finnish attack complicated the defense of the city. At one point, the defending front commander, Popov, could not release reserves opposing the Finnish forces to be deployed against the Wehrmacht because they were needed to bolster the 23rd Army's defences on the Karelian Isthmus. Mannerheim terminated the offensive on 31 August 1941, when the army had reached the 1939 border. Popov felt relieved, and redeployed two divisions to the German sector on 5 September. Subsequently, the Finnish forces reduced the salience of Balustrov and Kurgisalo, which had threatened their positions at the sea coast and south of the river Vuxi. Lieutenant General Pavo Talvela and Colonel Jarvanen, the commander of the Finnish Coastal Brigade responsible for Ladoga, proposed to the German headquarters the blocking of Soviet convoys on Lake Ladoga. The German command formed the International Naval Detachment which also included the Italian 12 Squadrilla Moss under Finnish command and the Einsatzstab Fara Ost under German command. These naval units operated against the supply route in the summer and autumn of 1942, the only period the units were able to operate as freezing waters then forced the lightly equipped units to be moved away, and changes in front lines made it impractical to re-establish these units later in the war. Topic. Defensive operations The Leningrad Front initially the Leningrad Military District was commanded by Marshal Klimat Voroshilov. It included the 23rd Army in the northern sector between the Gulf of Finland and Lake Ladoga, and the 48th Army in the western sector between the Gulf of Finland and the Slutsk MGA position. The Leningrad Fortified Region, the Leningrad Garrison, the Baltic Fleet Forces, and Kopori, Southern and Slutsk Kolpino operational groups were also present. Topic. Defense of civilian evacuees According to Zhukov, before the war Leningrad had a population of 3,103,000 and 3,385,000 counting the suburbs. As many as 1,743,129, including 414,148 children were evacuated." Between 29 June 1941 and 31 March 1943. They were moved to the Volga area, the Urals, Siberia and Kazakhstan. By September 1941, the link with the Volkov Front commanded by Kirill Maretskov was severed and the defensive sectors were held by four armies, 23rd Army in the northern sector, 42nd Army on the western sector, 55th Army on the southern sector, and the 67th Army on the eastern sector. The 8th Army of the Volkov Front had the responsibility of maintaining the logistic route to the city in coordination with the Ladoga flotilla. Air cover for the city was provided by the Leningrad Military District PVO Corps and Baltic Fleet Naval Aviation Units. The defensive operation to protect the 1,400,000 civilian evacuees was part of the Leningrad counter-siege operations under the command of Andrei Zhdanov, Klimat Voroshilov, and Alexei Kuznetsov. Additional military operations were carried out in coordination with Baltic Fleet Naval Forces under the general command of Admiral Vladimir Tributs. The Ladoga flotilla under the command of V. Baranovsky, S. V. Zemlyanichenko, P. A. Trainin, and B. V. 
Hiroshikan also played a major military role in helping with evacuation of the civilians. Topic. Bombardment By Monday 8 September, German forces had largely surrounded the city, cutting off all supply routes to Leningrad and its suburbs. Unable to press home their offensive, and facing defenses of the city organized by Marshal Zhukov, the Axis armies laid siege to the city for 900 days and nights. The air attack of Friday 19 September was particularly brutal. It was the heaviest air raid Leningrad would suffer during the war, as 276 German bombers hit the city killing 1,000 civilians. Many of those killed were recuperating from battle wounds in hospitals that were hit by German bombs. Six air raids occurred that day. Five hospitals were damaged in the bombing, as well as the city's largest shopping bazaar. Hundreds of people had run from the street into the store to take shelter from the air raid. Artillery bombardment of Leningrad began in August 1941, increasing in intensity during 1942 with the arrival of new equipment. It was stepped up further during 1943, when several times as many shells and bombs were used as in the year before. Torpedoes were often used for night bombings by the Luftwaffe. Against this, the Soviet Baltic Fleet Navy aviation made over 100,000 air missions to support their military operations during the siege. German shelling and bombing killed 5,723 and wounded 20,507 civilians in Leningrad during the siege. Topic. Supplying the defenders To sustain the defense of the city, it was vitally important for the Red Army to establish a route for bringing a constant flow of supplies into Leningrad. This route was effected over the southern part of Lake Ladoga and the corridor of land which remained unoccupied by Axis forces between Lake Ladoga and Leningrad. Transport across Lake Ladoga was achieved by means of watercraft during the warmer months and land vehicles driven over thick ice in winter hence the route becoming known as the Ice Road. The security of the supply route was ensured by the Ladoga Flotilla, the Leningrad PVO Corps, and route security troops. Vital food supplies were thus transported to the village of Osinovets, from where they were transferred and transported over 45 kilometers via a small suburban railway to Leningrad. The route would also be used to evacuate civilians from the besieged city. This was because no evacuation plan had been made available in the chaos of the first winter of the war, and the city was completely isolated until 20 November 1941, when the ice road over Lake Ladoga became operational. This road was named the Road of Life Russian. As a road it was very dangerous. There was the risk of vehicles becoming stuck in the snow or sinking through broken ice caused by the constant German bombardment. Because of the high winter death toll the route also became known as the road of death. However, the lifeline did bring military and food supplies in and took civilians and wounded soldiers out, allowing the city to continue resisting their enemy. Topic. Effect on the city The two-and-a-half-year siege caused the greatest destruction and the largest loss of life ever known in a modern city. On Hitler's direct orders the Wehrmacht looted and then destroyed most of the imperial palaces, such as the Catherine Palace, Peterhof Palace, Rapsha, Strelna, Gatchina, and other historic landmarks located outside the city's defensive perimeter, with many art collections transported to Germany. A number of factories, schools, hospitals and other civil infrastructure were destroyed by air raids and long-range artillery bombardment. The 872 days of the siege caused extreme famine in the Leningrad region through disruption of utilities, water, energy and food supplies. This resulted in the deaths of up to 1,500,000 soldiers and civilians and the evacuation of 1,400,000 more mainly women and children, many of whom died during evacuation due to starvation and bombardment. Piskaryovskoy Memorial Cemetery alone in Leningrad holds half a million civilian victims of the siege. Economic destruction and human losses in Leningrad on both sides exceeded those of the Battle of Stalingrad, the Battle of Moscow, or the bombing of Tokyo. The Siege of Leningrad ranks as the most lethal siege in world history, and some historians speak of the siege operations in terms of genocide, as a racially motivated starvation policy that became an integral part of the unprecedented German war of extermination against populations of the Soviet Union generally. 
Civilians in the city suffered from extreme starvation, especially in the winter of 1941–42. From November 1941 to February 1942 the only food available to the citizen was 125 grams of bread per day, of which 50–60% consisted of sawdust and other inedible admixtures. In conditions of extreme temperatures down to minus 30 degrees Celsius minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit, and with city transport out of service, even a distance of a few kilometers to a food distribution kiosk created an insurmountable obstacle for many citizens. Deaths peaked in January to February 1942 at 100,000 per month, mostly from starvation. People often died on the streets, and citizens soon became accustomed to the sight of death. Topic. Cannibalism While reports of cannibalism appeared in the winter of 1941–42, NKVD records on the subject were not published until 2004. Most evidence for cannibalism that surfaced before this time was anecdotal. Anna Reid points out that, "...for most people at the time, cannibalism was a matter of second-hand horror stories rather than direct personal experience." Indicative of Leningraders' fears at the time, police would often threaten uncooperative suspects with imprisonment in a cell with cannibals. Dmitry Lazarev, a diarist during the worst moments in the Leningrad siege, recalls his daughter and niece reciting a terrifying nursery rhyme adapted from a pre-war song. A dystrophic walked along with a dull look in a basket he carried a corpse's ass, I'm having human flesh for lunch, this piece will do, uh, hungry sorrow, and for supper, clearly I'll need a little baby, I'll take the neighbors, steal him out of his cradle, NKVD files report the first use of human meat as food on 13 December 1941. The report outlines 13 cases, which range from a mother smothering her 18-month-old to feed her three older children to a plumber killing his wife to feed his sons and nieces. By December 1942 the NKVD had arrested 2,105 cannibals, dividing them into two legal categories, corpse-eating and person-eating The latter were usually shot while the former were sent to prison. The Soviet Criminal Code had no provision for cannibalism, so all convictions were carried out under Code Article 59-3. Special Category Banditry. Instances of person eating were significantly lower than that of corpse eating. Of the 300 people arrested in April 1942 for cannibalism, only 44 were murderers. 64% of cannibals were female, 44% were unemployed, 90% were illiterate, 15% were rooted inhabitants, and only 2% had any criminal records. More cases occurred in the outlying districts than in the city itself. Cannibals were often unsupported women with dependent children and no previous convictions, which allowed for a certain level of clemency in legal proceedings. Given the scope of mass starvation, cannibalism was relatively rare. Far more common was murder for ration cards. In the first six months of 1942, Leningrad witnessed 1,216 such murders. At the same time, Leningrad was experiencing its highest mortality rate, as high as 100,000 people per month. Lisa Kirschenbaum notes that incidents of cannibalism provided an opportunity for emphasizing that the majority of Leningraders managed to maintain their cultural norms in the most unimaginable circumstances. Topic. Soviet relief of the siege On 9 August 1942, the Symphony No. 7, Leningrad, by Dmitry Shostakovich was performed by the Leningrad Radio Orchestra. The concert was broadcast on loudspeakers placed throughout the city and also aimed towards the enemy lines. The same day had been previously designated by Hitler to celebrate the fall of the city with a lavish banquet at Leningrad's Astoria Hotel, and was a few days before the Siniavino Offensive. Siniavino Offensive The Siniavino Offensive was a Soviet attempt to break the blockade of the city in early autumn 1942. The Second Shock and the Eighth Armies were to link up with the forces of the Leningrad Front. At the same time the German side was preparing an offensive to capture the city, Operation Nordlicht Northern Light, using the troops freed up after the capture of Sevastopol. Neither side was aware of the other's intentions until the battle started. The offensive began on 27 August 1942 with some small-scale attacks by the Leningrad Front, preempting 
Nordlicht by a few weeks. The successful start of the operation forced the Germans to redirect troops from the planned Nordlicht to counterattack the Soviet armies. The counteroffensive saw the first deployment of the Tiger tank, though with limited success. After parts of the Second Shock Army were encircled and destroyed, the Soviet offensive was halted. However, the German forces also had to abandon their offensive. Topic. Operation Iskra The encirclement was broken in the wake of Operation Iskra Spark, a full-scale offensive conducted by the Leningrad and Volkov fronts. This offensive started in the morning of 12 January 1943. After fierce battles the Red Army units overcame the powerful German fortifications to the south of Lake Ladoga, and on 18 January 1943, the Volkov Front's 372nd Rifle Division met troops of the 123rd Rifle Brigade of the Leningrad Front, opening a 10-12 km wide land corridor, which could provide some relief to the besieged population of Leningrad. Lifting the siege The siege continued until 27 January 1944, when the Soviet Leningrad Novgorod strategic offensive expelled German forces from the southern outskirts of the city. This was a combined effort by the Leningrad and Volkov fronts, along with the 1st and 2nd Baltic fronts. The Baltic fleet provided 30% of aviation power for the final strike against the Wehrmacht. In the summer of 1944, the Finnish defence forces were pushed back to the other side of the Bay of Vyborg and the Vuxi River. The siege was also known as the Leningrad Blockade and the 900 Day Siege. Topic. Timeline 1941 April, Hitler intends to occupy and then destroy Leningrad, according to Plan Barbarossa and General Plan Ost. The 22nd of June, the Axis powers invasion of Soviet Union begins with Operation Barbarossa. The 23rd of June, Leningrad commander M. Popov, sends his second in command to reconnoiter defensive positions south of Leningrad. The 29th of June, construction of the Luga defense fortifications Russian, Luskij Oboronitelnij Rubes begins together with evacuation of children and women. June to July, over 300,000 civilian refugees from PSKOV and Novgorod escaping from the advancing Germans come to Leningrad for shelter. The armies of the Northwestern Front join the front lines at Leningrad. Total military strength with reserves and volunteers reaches 2 million men involved on all sides of the emerging battle. 19-23 July, first attack on Leningrad by Army Group North is stopped 100 kilometers 62 miles south of the city. 27 July, Hitler visits Army Group North, angry at the delay. He orders Field Marshal von Lieb to take Leningrad by December. 31 July, Finns attack the Soviet 23rd Army at the Karelian Isthmus, eventually reaching northern pre-Winter War Finnish-Soviet border. 20 August to 8 September, artillery bombardments of Leningrad hit industries, schools, hospitals and civilian houses. 21 August, Hitler's Directive No. 34 orders, "...encirclement of Leningrad in conjunction with the Finns." 20 to 27 August evacuation of civilians is blocked by attacks on railways and other exits from Leningrad. The 31st of August Finnish forces go on the defensive and straighten their front line. This involves crossing the 1939 pre-winter war border and occupation of municipalities of Kurjasalo and Balustrov. The 6th of September German high commands Alfred Jodl fails to persuade Finns to continue offensive against Leningrad. 2–9 September, Finns capture the Balustrov and Kurjasalo salients and conduct defensive preparations. 8 September, land encirclement of Leningrad is completed when the German forces reach the shores of Lake Ladoga. 10 September, Joseph Stalin appoints General Zhukov to replace Marshal Voroshilov as Leningrad Front and Baltic Fleet Commander. 12 September, the largest food depot in Leningrad, the Batajevsky General Store, is destroyed by a German bomb. 15 September, von Lieb has to remove the 4th Panzer Group from the front lines and transfer it to Army Group Center for the Moscow Offensive. 
The 19th of September, German troops are stopped 10 kilometers (6.2 miles) from Leningrad. Citizens join the fighting at the defense lines. The 22nd of September, Hitler directs that Saint Petersburg must be erased from the face of the earth. The 22nd of September, Hitler declares less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 we have no interest in saving lives of the civilian population the 8th of november hitler states in a speech at munich leningrad must die of starvation the 10th of november soviet counterattack begins forcing germans to retreat from tikvin back to the volkhov river by the 30th of december preventing them from joining finnish forces stationed at the sphere river east of leningrad December, Winston Churchill wrote in his diary, "'Leningrad is encircled, but not taken.'" The 6th of December, Great Britain declared war on Finland. This was followed by declaration of war from Canada, Australia, India and New Zealand. 1942 The 7th of January, Soviet Lyuban offensive operation is launched. It lasts 16 weeks and is unsuccessful, resulting in the loss of the Second Shock Army. January, Soviets launch battle for the Nevsky Pyotochok bridgehead in an attempt to break the siege. This battle lasts until May 1943, but is only partially successful. Very heavy casualties are experienced by both sides. 4 to 30 April Luftwaffe operation ice stow ice impact fails to sink baltic fleet ships iced in at leningrad June to September new german railway mounted artillery bombards leningrad with 800 kilograms 1800 pounds shells August the spanish blue division division azul transferred to leningrad the 9th of august 1942 the symphony number no. 7 leningrad by Dmitry Shostakovich was performed in the city. The 14th of August to the 27th of October, naval detachment K clashes with Leningrad supply route on Lake Ladoga. The 19th of August, Soviets begin an eight-week-long Sinyavino offensive, which fails to lift the siege, but thwarts German offensive plans. Operation Nordlicht. Topic 1943. January to December, increased artillery bombardments of Leningrad 12-30 January, Operation Iskra penetrates the siege by opening a land corridor along the coast of Lake Ladoga into the city. The blockade is broken. The 10th of February to the 1st of April, the unsuccessful Operation Polyarnaya Zvezda attempts to lift the siege. 1944. 14 14th of January to the 1st of March several Soviet offensive operations begin aimed at ending the siege the 27th of January siege of Leningrad ends Germans forces pushed 60 to 100 kilometers away from the city January before retreating the German armies loot and destroy the historical palaces of the Tsars such as the Catherine Palace the Peterhof Palace the Gatchina Palace and the Strelna Palace Many other historic landmarks and homes in the suburbs of St. Petersburg are looted and then destroyed, and a large number of valuable art collections are moved to Nazi Germany. During the siege, 3,200 residential buildings, 9,000 wooden houses were burned, and 840 factories and plants were destroyed in Leningrad and suburbs. <laughs> Later evaluation American evaluation Historian Michael Walzer summarized that, "...the siege of Leningrad killed more civilians than bombing of Hamburg, Dresden, Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined." The U.S. Military Academy evaluated that Russian casualties during the siege were bigger than combined American and British casualties during the entire war. Controversial issues Topic. Controversy over Finnish participation Almost all Finnish historians regard the siege as a German operation and do not consider that the Finns effectively participated in the siege. 
Russian historian Nikolai Barishnikov argues that active Finnish participation did occur, but other historians have been mostly silent about it, most likely due to the friendly nature of post war Soviet Finnish relations. The main issues which count in favor of the former view are a, the Finns mostly stayed at the pre Winter War border at the Karelian Isthmus with small exceptions to straighten the front line, despite German wishes and requests, and b, they did not bombard the city from planes or with artillery and did not allow the Germans to bring their own land forces to. Finnish lines. Barishnikov explains that the Finnish military in the region was strategically dependent on the Germans, and lacked the required means and will to press the attack against Leningrad any further. <inaudible> Soviet deportation of civilians with enemy nations ethnic origin, Germans and Finns Deportations of Finns and Germans from the Leningrad area to inhospitable areas of the Soviet Union began in March 1942 using the road of life, many of their descendants still remain in those areas today. However, the situation in Leningrad during the blockade was worse in comparison with the eastern areas where most of the city residents were evacuated. Inhospitable areas of the Soviet Union hosted millions of the evacuees, many factories, universities, and theaters were also evacuated there. Topic. Commemoration, monuments Topic. Leningrad Siege and Defense Museum Even during the siege itself, war artifacts were collected and shown to the public by city authorities, such as the German airplane that was shot down and fell to the ground in Taurikiski Garden such objects were displayed as a sign of the people's courage, and gathered in a specially allocated building of the former 19th-century salt warehouses The exhibition was soon turned into a full-scale museum of Leningrad defense now Gosudarstvenij Memorialnai Musei Oboroni i Blokadi Leningrada Several years after World War II, in the late 1940s, early 1950s, Stalin's supposed jealousy of Leningrad city leaders caused their destruction in the course of politically motivated show trials forming the post-World War II Leningrad Affair the pre-war purge followed the 1934 assassination of the popular city ruler Sergei Kirov. Now another generation of state and Communist Party functionaries of the city was wiped out, supposedly for publicly overestimating the importance of the city as an independent fighting unit and their own roles in defeating the enemy. Their brainchild, the Leningrad Defense Museum, was also destroyed, and many valuable exhibits were destroyed. The museum was revived in the late 1980s with the then wave of Glasnost, when new shocking facts were published, showing both heroism of the wartime city and hardships and even cruelties of the period. The exhibition opened in its originally allocated building, but has not yet regained its original size and area, most of its former premises having been given before its revival over to the military and other governmental offices. Plans for a new modern building of the museum have been suspended due to the financial crisis, but under the present Defense Secretary Sergei Shoigu promises have been made to expand the museum at its present location. Topic. Monuments, the Green Belt of Glory and Memorial Cemeteries Commemoration of the siege got a second wind during the 1960s. Local workers of art dedicated their achievements to the victory and memory of the war they saw. A leading local poet and war participant Mikhail Dudin suggested erecting a ring of monuments on the places of heaviest siege time fighting and linking them into a belt of gardens around the city showing where the advancing enemy armies were stopped forever. That was the beginning of the Green Belt of Glory Rue, Zelenij Poes Slavy on 29 October 1966, a monument entitled Broken Ring of the Siege, Rue, Razorvano Kolko was erected at the 40th km of the Road of Life, on the shore of Lake Ladoga near the village of Kokorevo. Designed and created by Konstantin Simon, the monument pays tribute not only to the lives saved via the frozen Ladoga, but also the many lives broken by the blockade. The monument to the heroic defenders of Leningrad, Ru, Monument Jerowiskim Zasitnikum Leningrada, was erected on 9 May 1975 in Victory Square, St. Petersburg. The monument is a huge bronze ring with a gap in it, pointing towards the site that the Soviets eventually broke through the encircling German forces. In the center a Russian mother cradles her dying soldier son. The monument has an inscription saying, 900 days 900 nights. 
An exhibit underneath the monument contains artifacts from this period, such as journals. In later years, smaller scale objects were added, such as memorial plaques to sources of water, a siege time water well, and a river ice hole. Rus, <laughs> memorial cemeteries During the siege, numerous deaths of civilians and soldiers led to considerable expansion of burial places later memorialized, of which the best known is Piskaryovskoy Memorial Cemetery. See also World War II casualties List of famines Effect of the Siege of Leningrad on the city Operation Nordlicht Northern Light. Consequences of Nazism Hero City Obelisk Piskaryovskoy Memorial Cemetery Leningrad Affair Axis Powers Eastern Front Operation Barbarossa References Topic Notes Topic Bibliography Topic Further reading Topic Fiction related to the Siege of Leningrad Topic External Links Blockada Siege of Leningrad 2006 on YouTube Leningrad Blockade Part 1 on YouTube retrieved on the 29th of June 2008 900 Days A documentary about the siege of Leningrad by Jessica Gorder In the Vortex of Congealed Time by Oleg Yuryev An overview of the literature of the siege of Leningrad The Siege of Leningrad a collection of documents, articles, excerpts from books about the siege and links to photographs and footage. Russian State Memorial Museum of Defense and Siege of Leningrad in Russian The Museum of the Siege of Leningrad at Google Cultural Institute